Hey guys, Ryan McKenzie here with the Rainmaker Academy and the I Hate Selling sales system. I'm excited to talk to you guys today. We are going to get this thing started in just a minute or two. I know some of you guys have been waiting to get going here and um, I've got some fun stuff today. So we're going to talk about building your business from the inside out and I'm going to tackle the number one the number one question I have gotten all year long from fitness professionals. Some of you have asked me that question. Some of you have said, Ryan, I'm struggling with this. I need help with this. And you um, you, you wanted some answers. And I've talked to some of you individually, but I said, then it's time. We're, we're just over halfway through the year here. And it's time to really just open this up so everybody can get some help. So here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I've got some stuff I'll throw on the screen as we're going. Let me pull up my notes. And we'll make this happen, guys. This is the top sales question for 2018. It's a pretty big deal. What um what I want to see from you as you're getting in here is what is your specific question? Because we're gonna talk a little more general because I can't get specific with you right now if um in your specific business, just me talking to a screen. But if you have specific questions, throw them in here and I'll see them pop up, and then I will let I'll let them go up on the screen if they're good questions and we'll talk through them. Otherwise, I've got one big, big thought and we're going to kind of dissect it and dive into it to help you grow your business this year. So I was going to have Lindsay Rainwater only. The technology didn't work out. She has some really, really great stuff on communication and on um, making sure that you're growing things the right way from the inside out, the systems that you use and the way that you communicate. So maybe another day we'll have her on. Today, we couldn't get the video. So Lindsay, sorry if that was, if uh, whatever in there that was not working out, but we're going to dive into the sales aspect of it now and we'll get onto some communication stuff later. Uh, so y'all ready for this? You ready? I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited right here. <sighs> Number one sales question of the year for 2018. Here it is. Y'all ready? How do I overcome the objections? How do I overcome the objections? everybody is asking, Ryan, I get this objection. They, they won't sign up because of price. They won't sign up because of time. They won't sign up because they're not committed enough. What is your biggest objection you get? I want to hear it from you. So I'm taking a big picture approach and we'll dig in. Your biggest objection that you get throughout your um, throughout your business, when you're talking mainly signing somebody up or re-signing somebody or keeping them going, stopping them from quitting, keeping the momentum going. Because the one thing I realized when I started uh, in, the, in the fitness industry, I had no idea this was a sales job. I had no idea we were we were salesmen and saleswomen. We, were, we had to make sales to make a living, right? I, in my mind, I was like, oh, I love to work out. I love to help people work out. So shoot, I mean, that's all there is to it, right? I have good workouts. I love what I do. I love people that should be enough. Sadly enough, it's not. You're in a constant state of selling, and that's terrifying and um, just really awful for some of you if you don't understand what sales really is. If you can understand what sales really is, then it's a really liberating, amazing thing because we have to start reframing the way we think about sales, that it's not just manipulating and convincing, but it's helping someone find what's best for them and motivating them into that. Now, one of the biggest things I've talked with some of my clients about helping them with this, through the sales process is stop thinking about it like you're trying to convince them of something. Stop thinking about it like you're bothering them or that you are harassing them. Think six months down the road, a year down the road. What are they going to say to you? Are they going to say, oh, yeah, that's that girl I talked to uh, six months ago. I never heard back from her. Or are they going to say, man, I'm so glad I'm so glad she stayed with me and didn't give up on me because now my life is completely different, right? A year down the road, like, man, I never would have lost that 20 pounds. I never would have lost that weight. I never would have got back in shape if it wasn't if it wasn't for my trainer that really just kept at me and he really did a great job motivating me and inspiring me. I was never going to sign up if he didn't encourage me the right way. So that's, that's a different way to think about it. So there are three types of obje objections that I want to dig into, only three. And, and these are the three things you need to wrap your mind around today. So if you want to be good in this industry, if you want to be good with people, there's three types of, of objections that you're going to have to master, that you're going to have to be able to recognize if you want to change other people and, and help them to change themselves, really. So first, first type, 
Do you know what it is? It's not any sales book. It's, this is first type of objection is your objections. So this is kind of different. It's a more of a soft skill here. Not like not a sales objection or a price objection or a time objection. This is your own objection, right? So we need to start changing the way we think about our business and the way we think about how we value what we do. If we want to change anybody at all, if we want to help anybody at all, because if you object to your price, if you object to your what you're doing, if you don't really believe in it, there's no way they're going to believe in it. So you have to know that what you're doing is valuable. And here's the, the, the scary part. It's called the curse of knowledge. I don't know if you've heard of this before. But with the curse of knowledge, what it says is as soon as you know what you're talking about, as soon as you start to become an expert, as soon as you start to dig into a subject and learn about it and internalize it, it all of a sudden loses all value to you. So before you were willing to pay a couple hundred dollars for your NASM CPT. You're willing to pay hundreds and hundreds of dollars for certifications and for um, and for conferences and for books and for seminars and stuff like that. But the second you get that CPT, the second you get that um, CEU, the second you go to the conference and you get all the continuing education, you never go. Most of you are not going to go back and pay the same amount of money to do it again because you already know it. It's lost the value. Same thing happens in our business. Before you become a trainer, before you really dig in and know the science behind what you're doing and know the processes behind what you're doing, I mean, the people that don't know that, they, they're, they, they, it's very valuable to them. They, they need to know, is this going to help me? Is this going to hurt me? Is this going to make me better or worse? I don't know these things. But you as the trainer, you as the professional, you as the manager or team leader, you already know it. And so for you, it's not that valuable. It's not that important. It's not that... You can even if you have a great story where you yourself have been changed, it can still lose value. And we need to keep that in mind that we need to believe that it matters. And, and we need to believe that what we do is making a difference. If you don't, any objection is gonna lots of objections are gonna start coming up because they're gonna see right through your hundred dollar an hour, fifty dollar an hour, twenty dollar an hour, whatever you charge, whatever it is you do. And they are going to object and object and object because you have brought it on yourself. So your objections are the first thing that we got to get over. If you can't get over your objections, you will never make it past their objections because they can't make it past your objections. Yes, that is right. So you with me there? Your objections, number one. Let's go to the second one here. Their objections. Their objections. You see what I'm doing? Now, this is the point everybody asks about. This is the point where like, well, they're say, they're, they, they said it's too expensive. I know because like, I wouldn't be able to afford this. And, I'm, and we put our objections right in there because we don't really believe it's worth it. But when somebody objects, we're going to keep this part simple. If you have more specifics, throw them at me. If you have specific objections you want ideas on or you want thoughts on, throw them at me. We'll talk about it. When somebody objects, all they're really saying is... I need you to lead me. I need you to show me why I should say yes. I need to understand why this is important. Lead me. Tell me. Explain it to me. Help me see it. That's all they're saying. And if you can see that, it's going to be so helpful. You're going to go away from this idea of they objected. Oh, my gosh, there's a conflict. I got to get away from here. I'm done. You're going to go right into like, okay, they need me to lead them. They need some help. They need to understand why they should say yes. They need you to lead them to a reason to say yes. That's all it is. So if you can take it that way where you're, you're being very positive and not combative, but you're going straight at them and saying, I completely understand that. Here's why. I completely understand that. Here's why. That's common. Here, here's, here's the main thing. So their objections, the answer to every single one of them, 90 We'll go 95%, right? 95% of them, they just need you to lead the way. And if they're stuck on it, I'm going to guess that you did not lead the way leading up to it. And if you'd taken control of the conversation by listening, and by following a proper system, then you'd be leading the whole way through and you'd be able to lead them out of that objection into the yes that they desire to give you. People want to say yes to you. They want to be liked by you. They want your approval. So you need to lead them to the yes. It's that simple. The next one, last one, 
and then we're pretty much done for the day. So this is a short little tip here, guys. Your businesses' objections. That sounds strange. Your businesses' objections. So as a trainer, maybe you have your own business. Maybe you're working for a company. Maybe you run a company. It does not matter here. There's different levels of this, of how much you can implement it. But for yourself, as you're having personal conversations with potential clients, members, boot camp participants, whatever it might be, are you set up to lead them the entire way? Now, we talked about how they want to be led. And we talked about how maybe you're missing out in the beginning. And if you're missing out in the beginning, leading them through the process, you probably don't have a process for sales. So if you don't have a process for sales, it's going to feel chaotic. You're going to come to the end of it and be like, so, um, do you, you want to, do you want to, you want to sign up now? I, I guess you want to, or some people say, just be quiet until they say something like, this is awkward. This is so awkward. Why is it so awkward? It's because you don't have the right system. And if you don't have the right system, everything becomes an objection. I don't like the way they started class. I don't like the way that she tested us. I don't like the way that she spoke to me. I don't. It doesn't feel right to them because there's not order to it. And if there's not order to it, then everything is going to come out of them as an objection rather than, wow, that makes sense. Wow, that makes sense. Wow, that makes sense. Tell you what, um, I just bought an Amazon Echo. Right. Very cool thing. Um, kind of fun. I don't really get it all the way yet, but I'm, I'm working my way through it. And when it came out of the box, there was an app to download right away. There was a picture step by step instructions on how to do it. And it just felt right. It felt like, oh, I can do this. It went from like this idea of like, that's kind of weird, kind of cool. I'll try it out to like, oh, it's so simple. It's so simple. It's so simple. Every step of the way. It's amazing. So I did the same thing with the Google Home Mini, and this is not a, a review of which one's better or worse, but when the Google Home came out of the box, it was, I don't know what they want me to do, and I'm a pretty, I'm decent with technology, so it wasn't, it's not a big deal, I figured it out, but the difference in the feeling from opening up that Echo and opening up that Google Home, I, I tried them both, and the Echo had a system, step-by-step-by-step step by step approach that was leading me through and it did away with every one of my objections. The The Google Home was just list after list and random things and not really a, just try talking to it. Another thing, it's like, I don't get it. I don't like it. It feels weird. Is it listening to me? I have all these thoughts about the Google and not any of those thoughts about the Amazon. And they both could be the exact same machine, but the paper and the app and everything that came with it made sense. You following me? How does that relate to your business? Are you... Just throwing people in there? Are you saying, here's what we're going to do and just follow me, it's going to be okay? Or is it laid out where they feel the whole way through like they're being taken care of? Where they feel the whole way through like they know that you care about them? Where they feel the whole way through like they know that you know what their real pain is, not just, oh, my back or my knees, but they know that you know that you used to feel like an athlete. And you used to feel like you could do anything. And now the way your wife looks at you is not the same anymore. And and you get that about them, but you want to help them through it so they can play with their grandkids from now on and and be that active grandfather. Do they feel that way? Not just other workouts making them feel that way, but do they know that you know that's what they need? Are you with me? Step-by-step approach. So that's what we use the doctor framework with I Hate Selling. So if you want to know more about that, we're going to keep this short. We're going to keep it simple. And I'm going to leave this right here for you. Trainwithryan.com slash schedule. Click on it. Get on it. And I'll I'll walk you through it. I'll help you with your business and get it going. So, guys, these are the three types of objections. And the one biggest question I get all, all year long, all this entire year, is how do I handle objections? How do I handle them? And, and to start handling the right way, you need to get in and take a look at your objections first, their objections second, and then take a big picture look at, is my business causing these objections? Because I think if you can take care of yourself and you can take care of your business, then everything they say is gonna take care of itself because you'll be able to set up the right system to lead them the right way and you'll actually believe it yourself. Try it out this week. 
Train smart, guys. Train smart. Live well. Talk to you soon. See you.